Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.8.7 and Polychop Simulations SA342L Gazelle Module. Welcome to Tutorial 2, Take Off and Navigational Flight. Today I'm going to show you the basics of picking up the helicopter into a hover check to ensure that uh, everything is okay uh, with your payload, you know, fuel weight, uh, local temperature, uh, pressure, etc. And that you actually have the power to hover the helicopter. That's useful information to know before you actually get in the air. Um, how to taxi around and do a takeoff and then how to navigate using the basic systems that are on board. Uh, we're going to cover navigation using the Nadir INS and also using the ADF system. And those are the two primary systems you have on board. Uh, optionally, of course, you, you have the tablet as well. The tablet really only gives you situational awareness, but you could still navigate with this uh, if you know what you're looking for on the chart. Uh, and also there is the option to navigate via the NS430. I'm not going to cover, cover either of these two systems today. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out how to put a set of coordinates into the Nadir. Um, now if you already have waypoints created and set in the mission editor, they will be automatically imported into both the Nadir and the NS430. In this case, though, I'm going to change one of my waypoints. Uh, I intend to fly to Nicosia. Um, we are actually here at Lakatamia. I've already taken down the coordinates. Uh, note that the helicopter uses the uh, decimal format for Latin long, although it can also take uh, UTM coordinates. Uh, but today we'll just do standard lat long, uh, and it only has one decimal place, so it's not super accurate, uh, but it's good enough for a navigational flight. So, uh, with your little mode selector, parameter selector in fact, um, you can be in a very variety of kind of different modes, PP being present position and BUT being waypoint. Make sure you're in BUT uh, waypoint mode, and you have selected the waypoint you intend to edit. I'm actually going to edit waypoint 1. You can then press ENTER, and the system goes into ENTER mode. You then have the option for EFF, that's basically backspace or delete. Uh, so we're going to backspace out what's currently there, and then we're going to type in 35091. one Oh, it didn't work. I have to do north first. Yes, I have to do north first. 35091. And you can see that's filled up. We now press the down arrow to select the longitude. And I'm actually going to backspace out all of this. Yeah, I, I, tr I tried this before and I didn't uh, backspace out the northing or the, the easting. I've now done that. So we'll press 6 to choose east. And in this case, it's going to be 33166. Six. Uh, and that's everything entered. It doesn't need a leading zero like many systems do. So note that. Then press enter again. It'll stop flashing. And the system is now updated. And we can now see that we're to fly oop, actually off to the right here. So kind of north ish, northeast, uh, sorry, northwest. Uh, and we've got a distance of 6.5 kilometers to cover. So, uh, we're basically ready to go. Now, note that this uh, tutorial is starting immediately after the previous tutorial uh, startup. So, the helicopter is in exactly the same condition it was previously. Uh, we're currently carrying uh, the GIAT 20mm and we're carrying a rocket pod. Uh, we also have a full internal fuel load, so we are quite heavy today, uh, although we burned some of it off already. I think we started at about 420, 430 litres. Uh, we're now just a shade under 400 litres, so we've, we've used a little bit of that fuel. Uh, so let's uh, cover the basic instruments here so you know what you're looking at. Uh, we have the attitude indicator. Uh, we have the vertical speed indicator. We have our airspeed indicator. We have the torque meter. Uh, now, this is very important for the uh, the check hover, or the hover check. We have our HSI, uh, showing both the nadir in the fat, in, uh, fat pointer and the ADF on the skinny pointer, and in distance to the currently selected nadir waypoint here in kilometres. Uh, we have our radar altimeter, and we have our barometric altimeter. Um, I'm actually going to leave the barometric altimeter set to QNH, so uh, it's currently indicating a little bit above 200 meters. Uh, note that both altimeters are in meters. Note that your airspeed is in kilometers per hour. Uh, it's a French aircraft, after all. And that's all your basic instruments, so that's what we're going to be monitoring during the course of this flight. So, very first thing we're going to do is the hover check. Uh, now, I've already looked at the table in the manual to see what my 
torque limit is for today uh, and at this temperature and altitude we have a torque limit of 100 percent so we're, we're not torque limited for this kind of takeoff if you were particularly high or if the temperature the outside air temperature was particularly hot uh, you may need to use a lower torque setting note also that you can put a bug on the uh, torque uh, indicator uh, to, so you know, if you had a limit of 90, you could put the put the bug on 90, and that would be your little visual reminder that you are limited. Uh, today, I'm not limited, so I'm just going to leave my pointer on 100%. Uh, I'm also going to put my at, uh, artificial horizon mode into Doppler. That gives me these two uh, needles showing me my deviation from my current ground position. Uh, I think we've got an outside. Yeah, there's the temperature gauge actually. So yeah, as you can see, outside temperature today is about 18, 19 Celsius. So uh, that's actually, you know, it's, it's warm, but it's not enough to be a limiting factor for us. Now, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Now, uh, keep in mind that I'm doing this in 2D. I normally fly in VR, so this is going to look a lot messier than usual. So what we do, we need to expect that the helicopter is going to yaw left as we increase collective. So I'm going to preemptively put in a bit of right pedal. There you go. And I'm going to slowly, slowly increase collective. We're getting light on the skids. Oh, and the nose is coming down. Very gentle. We want to pick the helicopter up to about five feet, and then we want to leave it there. Okay, and that's us. And we want to note how much torque that took. Uh, so in order to pick us up into the hover check, we were at about 70% torque. Uh, and that's good. So we, we know that we've got 30% to play with. We're nowhere near actually being on our limits here. And just very small cyclic movements all the time to keep us in the hover check. Uh, that actually was, that was a bit easier than I expected. Uh, it can be very hard to do this in 2D. And uh, we want to try and maintain like roughly over the same point on the ground. Uh, I'm not a super good helicopter pilot, so... Uh, I'm not going to be like right over the H that we started on, but um, I'm happy enough with this as a hover check. And like I said, we're at about 70% torque. Okay, so now I'm going to bring the nose down just a touch and bring us into the hover taxi. I'm going to do it nice and slow, especially when, you don't, when you're not very skilled, as I am not. Uh, you really just want to be doing walking pace. I'm going to roll the helicopter a little bit and give it a bit of yaw pedal to make the turn. And we're going to keep it going nice and slow. Let's not let it get away from us. And we're going to hover taxi all the way to the runway. And we're going to do a standard takeoff uh, using runway for alignment. Uh, standard takeoff in the Gazelle is pretty simple. Uh, you're actually basically just leaving it on the collective setting that you have for your hover check or hover taxi. And then nosing forward and increasing your airspeed. Uh, until it starts to generate a little bit more lift and it should kind of climb away on its own. You can give it a touch more collective if you need to. But we're going to go ahead and do that now. Uh, so anyway, let's uh, let's get to the start of the runway. We don't need every last meter of runway, but you know, let's not uh, deny ourselves extra runway. Okay, I'm going to let it start to slow down. Here we are, kind of at the start of the runway here. So let's uh, bring her around. Oh, that was a little bit aggressive. But we got it back under control. And here we are. We want to be back into the hover. Just like that. That's not too bad. And I've got my hand on the collective, but I'm not increasing collective. I'm going to drop the nose. And without losing altitude... I want to just let the speed start to increase. You can see that we're starting to climb away. I've not increased the collective at all. So note that. Uh, I'm going to push and hold trim. Hold the nose down a little bit and then release the trim. There we go. And we've actually transitioned into kind of more normal forward flight. I don't need that right pedal anymore. And as you can see on the torque gauge, I've still not increased my torque. And I want to climb away at about 120 kilometers per hour. Uh, I've given it a bit more torque now. I'm going to set about 80% torque. And that's us. We're in normal flight and we're climbing away. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fly towards waypoint one. 
So I'm going to roll the helicopter, and I'm going to give it some yaw pedal to bring it around. And we're going to align the HSI with the wide pointer, just like that, and roll out. Perfect. Uh, we can actually see how much um, slip we have with that pointer on the uh, attitude indicator. So I'm kind of lining it up a bit better. We also have the ball indicating slip as well. I'm going to drop collective a little bit now. So we should expect the helicopter to kind of settle um, on close to 70% torque, depending on yaw pedal position. Note that um, different yaw pedal positions will induce additional torque usage, so uh, be ready for that. So we're approaching five kilometers from our target. You can actually see the target dead ahead. That's where I was wanting to fly. And I can actually, now that we're going so fast, uh, I can re reduce the, the collective even further because we don't want to climb too much higher than this. Yeah, I'm reading, what is that, 150 meters on the radar altimeter. So yeah, I'll actually, I'm, I'm going to let it descend just a little bit just now because we don't need to be quite this high. So I'm going to visit this airfield here, and I'm going to fly back to the original airfield that we started at, which is Lakatamia. So as you can see, it's a fairly easy helicopter to fly, and it's actually quite fast. I'm really not pushing it. I'm at 60% torque right now, and I'm flying at, what's that, 180 kilometers an hour? Um, so, you know, that's, that's a fairly leisurely cruise. Uh, we're not pushing it, and the helicopter's going fairly fast. It's doing a pretty good job. Uh, as I said before, we've got ADF there on the skinny pointer as well. Uh, ADF is on 435, so that's actually that's over here at Erkan. Uh, we're not actually going to fly there because that's uh, a bit further away. But uh, note that you could just navigate to an ADF by tuning it there like that. So there we go. We have reached our waypoint, basically. It claims we're one kilometer away. I think I set those coordinates um, fairly close to the middle of the runway. Uh, so we'll, we'll overfly. You'll see the pointer flip around, and then we'll make our way back to Lakatamia. A nice, simple, leisurely flight. Let's fold out the tablet, and you can see what the tablet's showing us as well. There we go. Pointer's flipping around. We're now going to visually navigate back. And if you wanted to declutter your artificial horizon, by the way, you'd put it back uh, into visual mode, and it would stop indicating the Doppler stuff. Okay, there we go. We're 180 all the way around, and making our way back. I'll turn on the panel lighting, actually, there, because uh, we're getting some, some shade, uh, and it's actually making things a little bit dark in the cockpit. In daytime, the, the lighting doesn't really do that much, but uh, I've got it on anyway. Okay, and on our way back to Lakatamia. At Lakatamia, I'm going to uh, do a, a left-hand pattern, and then I will do a, a very gentle, kind of almost airplane-style landing. I'll, I'll fly down the runway, gently descending, and then I'll look to pick it up into a hover near the, the ramp end of the runway. Let's see if we can do this nice and neat. But yeah, I'm barely needing a cyclic input here. Once you've got it in forward flight, uh, I'm, I'm actually just inputting a touch of uh, yaw, sometimes left, sometimes right, depending on the wind, uh, and I'm just barely, like, just with a fingertip, basically moving the cyclic. Uh, and my collective is, is, most of the time, kind of fixed. Uh, I'm not moving the cyclic much. Sorry, the, the collective, I'm getting mixed up. I'm not moving the collective much. Just enough to maintain current altitude. I don't want to fly too high. Uh, I want to retain fairly low. And you can see on the uh, on the radar altimeter, I'm I'm never above about 60, 70 meters here. It can take a long time to descend again. You see, so I don't want to go too high and then have to manage my descent. Yeah. So much easier to fly, so much more pleasant to fly since the flight model update. Really, really nice. Just a, a joy to fly. So we should have the airfield in sight any moment now. The chart says it's somewhere here. Let's see if we can pick it up. There it is. 
Okay, so actually I messed up a little bit. Uh, let's just do a kind of left loop and get ourselves into the downwind. Actually, I guess let's let's throw it around a bit. Let me let me show you what it's like to throw around. We'll just throw it right into the downwind here. Not too shabby. There we go. Okay, and now I want to make sure that my speed is down. I want to get it down to about 120 kilometers an hour uh, while flying in the circuit for my approach. You'll see that I need so much less torque now. Um, and I'm just letting the speed kind of start to bleed off. And we're going to start a left turn. You'll see that as I input left yaw pedal, actually the torque meter goes down. Uh, and as I do right yaw pedal, torque goes up. So just be aware of that if you're ever finding yourself uh, doing a lot of right pedal uh, when you're at high torque situations, just be aware that that will uh, result in you increasing the torque demand. Okie dokie. So going down the runway now, let's see if I can maintain it going down the runway. Not very fast, slowly descending as well. And let's see if by the end of this we can have it picked back up into the hover. Oh, okay. I've actually, I've kind of done it early. That's not what I was aiming to do. Uh, let's, uh, let's just hover taxi back down the runway. And then, let's see if I can hover taxi it back onto one of these uh, parking spots. Again, I'm going to give myself excuses. Uh, you know, I'm in 2D uh, and I'm actually not that good a helicopter pilot, so uh, I'm sure all of you can do much better than me at this. Let's keep the speed under control, let's keep the altitude under control, and we're going to turn off the runway now. And let's just take the first on the right here. So I'm going to come right into this bit. I'm going to use a little bit of beep trim just to keep the pitch up. And I'm going to make a left turn, bring it into the parking. <laughs> yeah, if you find yourself doing tight turns like I just did, it tends to get away from you a little bit. You, you want to do that slower than I just did. Let's have it settle just about here. Ooh, touchdown. Oh dear. Right, let's give it a bit more collective. Let's try and do that again. That was a poor approach. If you find yourself in those kind of situations, be aware of dynamic rollover. Yeah, that's when you touch one skid on the ground while you have quite a bit of side slip. Uh, and that can involve, it, that can result in you rolling the helicopter over quite short order. So be aware of that and immediately just give it collective and, and fly away. Have it settle here. We're down. And collective full down. Phew, there you go. Okay, so like I said, I'm not amazing. <laughs> I'm not an amazing helicopter pilot. That's not quite on the parking space. I'm sure that the other pilots would make fun of me for that landing. But anyway, uh, it worked in the end. Uh, I got it down. We can go ahead and turn off our tablet. If we turn the comms volume all the way down on the NS430, it will automatically power down as well. Uh, and we can then go about shutting down our equipment. So, ADF can go to off, UHF can go to off, Nadir can go back to off, uh, VHF AM is off, VHF AM is off, uh, we can turn off the radar altimeter, we can turn off the gyro compass, we can turn off the autopilot and all of its channels, what else do we want to turn off? Turn off Pito, turn off Trim, both Trim channels, they're all off. I'm going to turn off my position lights. I'll actually turn off the RWR, although it's basically on all the time, usually. Uh, I think that's all the main systems there. So at this stage, we can go ahead and bring the uh, fuel lever all the way back. You can see turbine and rotor RPM are coming down. Many of the systems now have flagged, they're not powered anymore. We're going to go fuel pump off. And as it's passing 25,000, we can actually engage the rotor... Oh, it won't let me. 
If the, if the rotor is still turning too fast, the brake won't actually come down. That's it, it comes down now. So we're going to pull the, the, the rotor brake full down. Open the doors. And that's a good stop. And we can now go uh, anti-collision lights off. That's all the lights off. Rotor is stopped. And we can go generator, alternator, battery, off. Oh, actually, I had the panel lights still on. That's them off as well. And that's everything shut down. So there you go. That is, oh, actually, countermeasures off. <laughs> Let's not miss anything. So that was a, uh, a hover check, uh, some taxiing, a takeoff, navigational flight, and even a landing. So I hope you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. Uh, you also have the option of joining Deep Hack's ground crew by clicking the join button below and paying a small monthly fee. I really appreciate those of you who've done so. Thank you very much, Harish Rajan, Byron Farrow, Storm Kimbari, Channel Wright, Mangash, JR Walker, Chandler Hedgevald, Griff Nizzle, Mr. Yeti, Bread, Tier Zero, Erdinker Tan, Tiger Moto, Sean I am 81, Charts, John Bloor, Veli Tapani Corpicanas, Mike Delta, Sergei Dubrovic, Ogatai 36, Hamilton, Frantic Stone, Sandbox Code, Mr. Craptacular, Tog, Kitsune, Rocklin Gaming, Tea Kettle Barbecue, Shmo78, Alex, Colonel Billington, Matt, Flu Diddy, Jurgen Dressel, Aaron Redman, and Pink Floyd. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all next time.